everyone. A uh, long time in a bit. Sorry, been really busy. Um, just going to do a quick and talking about my two eight strings. Black Machine 8 and the Ibanez RG 2228. Um, well, first things first, I suppose. I mean, hands down, the Black Machine is, of course, miles better than the Ibanez, but you know, it costs about twice as much or more. So you'd expect it. Uh, just run through the specs quickly of the two guitars. Uh, the Black Machine is a 28 inch scale. It has swamp hash body with an ebony top, ebony fingerboard, ebony top on the um, headstock. There's a rosewood neck with ebony fillets. I chose the ivory binding. It's got uh, disposal locking tuners. Um, my configuration is with a, a master volume, master tone, three-way pickup selector. <coughs> the bridge, it's all individual pieces like you find on a bass. I forget the manufacturer. Um, had told me that I've forgotten. Um, it makes changing the strings really easy. And um, that's one thing also I'll talk about later with the A, the, the 2228, which is a bit of a bind with that one. But uh, this definitely, I mean, they just slot in the back here, pull them through, lock them, tune them up, done. Uh, the black machine has a, the cable goes in the back here with a uh, pin for the belt is, which is different I suppose. It's took a bit of getting used to but it's good, it doesn't take up any um, space, you don't have to root out the body so much, I think mean, like I said so. Um, ebony covering the electrics and the metal plate which says Black Machine and Built London on it. Yeah, so you can see, hopefully you can see, how thin the guitar is. The body's really thin. The neck's, I mean, it's not fat, it's not a fat neck. Um, it is solid, obviously, made out of rosewood, so it's uh, got a good heft to it. Um, um, but still, the guitar hangs very well balanced when playing it uh, standing. Yeah, the action was set up by Doug. I just, um, I think I took it up slightly on the higher strings. Um, other than that, I mean, basically perfectly set up. Uh, what else can I say about it? The Lundgren M8's in there at the moment, so all the videos I've done with this so far have had the Lundgren uh, M8's in. But, Hoysel pickups should be arriving within the next week or two, which I'm really excited about. I've got to try out the Hoysel pickups that Doug Specht together with Harry Hoysel at the um, Frankfurt and Music Messer this year. Uh, I love them. Uh, so I'm going to be really interested to see what kind of difference they'll make, and I'll certainly be posting a video about that when I've got them you know, built. So that's that one. Then the even as RG2228. Uh, run through the specs quickly. Basewood body. It has the uh, FX8 bridge, which is uh, based on a double locking Floyd system, but it's, it is fixed, it's not a trim system. Um, EMG808 is active, hence. Also a master volume, master tone, three-way pickup selector. Uh, rosewood fingerboard. Obviously one difference, uh, major difference here is that this has got some um, finish, galaxy black finish on it, whereas the black machine is, is oil finish, so it's a natural maple vein neck, if I remember correctly. Um, that up on the side later, make sure I'm correct. Go to tuners, uh, ops 
got a, a lock here, and the uh, Irones has got a 27 inch scale neck compared to the 28 inch of the black machine. Now, um, that is a noticeable difference, especially when you're doing uh, power cords down at the bottom here, uh, especially with the sort of augmented and add lines. Um, they are possible on both, but you do notice that extra length on the uh, black machine when it does stretch the fingers just that little bit more, but it's nothing that can't be managed, and um, just got to make sure to warm you fingers up first. I'll show you the profile. You can see that it's a lot thicker than the black machine and it's a lot heavier than the black machine. Um, I haven't actually played a full gig with the Evenos yet because it's meant as my backup guitar. I play with the black machine mainly and uh, so far I haven't had to use the Evenos live. As I said before, it costs about half as much. The even as actually the neck, it's very similar dimensions. It's got slightly less shoulders here, so that it doesn't protrude. The neck doesn't protrude quite as much in this region as in the back machine. So some people might actually find this more comfortable to start with. In fact, the the black machine I found when I first got it, it felt. The neck felt slightly alien in my hands because I'm so used to the Ibanez necks. Uh, but after a very short period of time, I got completely used to it. And once I stopped fighting it, and, uh, the, you just sort of indicate vaguely where your uh, fingers want to go and the black machine responds. Uh, it's a joy to play. And the Ibanez plays nicely as well. Uh, it is a 1500 odd euros guitar, so. Uh, it's not a bad guitar by any stretch of the imagination. It's just obviously not a patch on uh, the black machine, which I paid around 3,000 euros for instead, so twice as much. One gripe I have with the Eveners is the string gauges I use are a 72, 52, and then a 9 set for the rest of the strings. The 72 doesn't fit through the hole all the way. Like a, a bass string, I suppose. The 72 is a Daddario set that I use. The uh, uh, string sort of towards the end gets sort of gradually thinner as each layer finishes earlier. So I have to pull it through as far as it will go and then cut off the end bit here so that I've got a little bit of room and uh, so that I can fix it in there. So, of course, is a major hassle in comparison to. The black machine, as I say, you sort of pull it through, lock it, and tune it done. From the construction, um, it's done very well. Not as well as the black machine. I could say that pretty much about anything. Uh, I'm not a fan of active pickups myself, so I am thinking about putting some passives in here. Maybe the Lundgrens, once they're out of the black machine, and I've got the Hoysels in there. Um, yeah, so in, I'll be doing some sound tests, comparative sound tests between the two. Um, as I said, when I've got the high sills, I'll definitely be doing some new stuff there. I haven't done any recordings yet with the Ibanez, so I'll be doing a couple of those so you can hear the differences, hopefully. And yeah, if um, anyone's got any questions about anything I haven't mentioned in this video then uh, just let me know in the comments and I will try and answer them. So I hope this has been of some interest, some help to some people and uh, see you in the next bit. Bye. <laughs>